Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you an example of a pad footing design with axial load and bending moment. This video is a continuation of my first video on pad footing design, so if you haven't watched that one yet, go back and watch it to understand the theory behind the equations that we're going to use in this video. Thanks for coming back to the channel, I hope you find this video useful, and let's get into it. Design a pad footing to support a 600 by 250 millimeters column carrying a dead load of 400 kilonewtons, a live load of 200 kilonewtons, and a moment of 100 kilonewtons meter. The allowable bearing pressure QA is 150 kPa, which you get from your geotech. Um, let's adopt 50 millimeters cover and the concrete strength 25 MPa. So that's our pad footing dimensions. We've got the depth of 450. Uh, we've got an axial load and a moment. So the first thing we need to do is determine the footing size and the axial load is the dead load plus the live load unfactored. We don't factor the loads to find the footing size. So moment is equal force times distance, therefore eccentricity, which is the distance, is equal to moment divided by force. So 100 divided by 600, 0.167. Now let's assume one side of our footing to be 2 meters, so B equals to 2 meters. And we're going to use the combined effect equation, which is the summation of the bearing pressure due to axial load and moment. So you've got this formula here, which I show in, my, in the other last video. Plugging the numbers into the equation, we're going to find that the other side of the footing is equal to 2.8 meters. We want the pressure under the footing to be positive in order to get no tension under the footing. So E less than L divided by 6, so no tension is developed. That's the uh, middle third rule. Plugging the numbers into the equation, L divided by 6 is 0.47, so 0.167 is less than 0.47 so we're good there's no tension under the footing as i said let's assume the height of the footing 450 millimeters the next step is to determine the pressure under the footing so now we need to factor our loads okay so we factor dead load in 1.2 and live load in 1.5 so our um, axial load is going to be a total of 780 kilonewtons. The bending moment of 100 kilonewtons meters, I will assume it's already being factored. But if in your in your case, if you have a bending moment, you're going to have a bending moment from dead load and live load, so you factor them accordingly. Using the same equation of combined effects, Q1 works out to be 190 kPa and Q2 works out to be 90 kPa. So both are positive values, which means the footing is in direct contact with the soil over its full length, so there's no tension. So in order to design the reinforcement for bending, we need to work out the pressure under the footing at the critical section for bending, which is at the column phase for reinforced concrete columns. So let's find the pressure under the footing at column phase. To find QFC, we use similar triangles. I've drawn a red line here, which is the height of this triangle. Plugging the numbers into the equation, we're going to find that QFC is 150 kPa. So we've got 150 kPa here. Now we need to design the reinforcement for bending in X direction, which is this reinforcement here. We know that pressure is force over area, therefore force is pressure times area. Everything we will calculate from now on is for one meter width of footing. And since we have pressure varying linearly, I will divide this area in two. So we have F1 and F2. So we've got F1 is QFC times 1.1 times one meter strip that gives us 165 kilonewtons and F2 is pretty much the area of this triangle times 1.1 times 1 meter strip that gives us 22 kilonewtons. So moment is force times distance so what we have here is M is equal to F1 times 
half of 1.1 plus f2 times 2 thirds of 1.1 that's because f2 is inside a triangle so it's 2 thirds of this height here is the distance the moment works out to be 107 kilonewtons meter per width of footing now i'm gonna work out the area of steel required by using this simplified formula so we need to find the steel reinforcement required to withstand this bending moment that we just found here you can use whatever formula your code suggests to design the steel reinforcement. It's, it's the same formula for beams. So you, you just use the formula for beams that your code suggests. So we find, we plug the numbers into this equation here and find that our area of steel needs to be 730 millimeters squared per meter. Um, as per the code, there is a minimum steel reinforcement for footings. So you, you need a minimum steel reinforcement. We need to work out this minimum steel reinforcement in order to know if it's going to be greater than 730. So because if it's greater than 730, we need to adopt the minimum steel. As per the code, there's a minimum steel reinforce for footings, which is around 0.2% times 1 meter times the effect depth. That works out to be 768 millimeters square per meter. And this formula comes from section 9 slabs and section 21 footings in AS 3600 2018, which is the most recent one. Uh, for this area of steel, we need N16 at 250 centers. The reinforcement for bending in the Y direction follows the same principle, but now I'm using just the axial load to find the pressure Q. And the reason being is that this is not a biaxial moment problem, so I don't have a moment in this direction. Uh, if you had a moment, you would follow the same, the same procedure as previously, but now we're just gonna use the average pressure here. So to find the pressure, we just divide the factor axial load by the area of the pad footing, and this works out to be 140 kPa. Again, force equals pressure times area. Then for one meter width of footing, we get that F1 is 122.5 kilonewtons. Moment is force times distance, so M equals to F1 times 0.875 over 2. Half of 0.875 is the distance between the force and the point which we are calculating the moment, which is the face of the column. So we work out the moment and M equals to 54 kilonewtons meter per meter width of the footing. So we do the same process to find the required steel reinforcement. Obviously my minimum steel reinforcement will govern as calculated previously and we need again N16 at 250 centers. Now we're going to design for one-way shear failure or also called bending shear. So the critical section is the same as for the slabs and the shear action happens across the full width of the footing um, in this line which is at a distance D from the critical section for bending. So, so the critical section for bending is at the column face and then the critical section for shear is at a distance um, D, which is the effective length that we work out to be 0.384. We're using similar triangles again to find the pressure QV uh, under the footing at the shear critical section. So we just plug the numbers into the equation, we find QV to be 164.5 kPa. Again, force is pressure times area. The pressure is the area of the trapezium times 0.716 times one meter width of footing. So the area of the trapezium is just Q1 plus QV divided by two, and then times 0.716 times one meter, that gives us 127 kilonewtons per meter width of footing. And then the per clause 8.2.4.1 in AS3600, the shear force V needs to be less than the concrete shear capacity and VUC is equal to KV times BV times DV times the square roots of the concrete strength. DV is the greater of 0.72 times the height of the footing or 0.9 times the effective depth. And that comes from clause 8.2.1.9. DV works out to be 345.6, which is the greater of these two here, two values. 
kv is equal to this formula here it needs to be equal or less than 0 0.1 you can find this formula in cos 8.2.4.3 bv is just a thousand which is one meter width of pad footing and then plugging the numbers into the equation VUC works out to be 172.8 kilonewtons. We need to apply a reduction factor. This reduction factor works out to be 0 0.7 from table 2.2.2. The capacity, this capacity reduction factor is 0 0.7 if there's no shear reinforcement or the leagues you're using are low ductility. Otherwise, you just use 0 0.75. So our 5 VUC works out to be 121 kilonewtons, which is less than 125. So technically this is a fail. I'll keep moving. I know I rounded up a couple of numbers in the process. So it's pretty close. Um, I'm happy with that. But be my guest if you want to go back and increase the thickness of the footing. Um, I'm happy with this value. I'm just going to keep going. Also, um, I know that the one shear in the other direction easily passed, but I'll leave that for you as a homework. Check the shear in X direction. Finally, jump into the design for two-way shear failure or punching shear. So there's always a possibility that the column may literally punch through the footing, uh, especially for thinner footing slabs. For punching shear, the critical section is taken along a perimeter length U at a distance d over 2 from the face of the column. So the punching shear force will be equal to the pressure times the hatched area. The perimeter u is just the sum of the dimension of the face of the, this rectangle, so 634 times 2 plus 984 times 2, 3236 millimeters. The hatched area is the total area minus the shear perimeter area. So it works out to be 4.976 millimeters squared. V is equal to the pressure times the hatched area, which is 696.95 kilonewtons. To work out the concrete capacity, we use this formula. We know U, we know D, we just need to find FCV, and FCV comes from this formula in clause 9.3.3. FCV needs to be equal or less than 0 0.34 square roots of the concrete strength. BH is the ratio of, of larger column dimension to smaller column dimension, which works out to be 2.4. So we find FCV to be 1.558. Plugging the numbers into the equation, we find that VUO is 1,936 kilonewton. However, we cannot stop here because 1,936 kilonewton doesn't take into account bending moment. So we go to clause 9.3.4 and we use VU formula to find the reduction capacity of the concrete, which works out to be 1,678 kilonewtons. And then we need to apply the reduction capacity factor, phi, which is 0.7, and then we find that phi VU is 1,175 kilonewtons. So phi VU is greater than 696.65, so we are good. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, just drop me a comment below. If you want to see more of these videos, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.